Hello, praise the Lord. Woo! I'm using my cell phone. And I'm going to put you right there. Hello. Shalom to all the Israelites out there in Israel. How are you doing? Today, this book that I want to read, um, it's by Witness Lee and Watchman Nee. It is called Basic Elements of the Christian Life. This is what it looks like. It's a really, really short book. It only has... Uh, the light is like making weird things in my eyeballs. Sorry. 47 pages. Um, so I don't know exactly how long it will take for me to read chapter one. This is volume one of, of Basic Elements of the Christian Life. It's a really good book. I thought I would um, read a chapter of this. Anyways, okay. This is what the first page nope, this is not the first, looks like. Okay, I want to read it to you. Chapter 1, The Mystery of Human Life. Have you ever wondered why you are living in the world and what the purpose of life is, of your life is? There are six keys that unlock this mystery. Number one, God's plan. God desires to express himself through man. Romans 8.29 for this purpose, he created man in his own image. Genesis 1.26 Just as a glove is made in the image of a hand to contain a hand, so also man is made in the image of God to contain God. By receiving God as his content, man can express God. 2 Corinthians 4.7 Number 2. Man. <clears throat> We're going to get to number 2 now. To, do, to fulfill his plan, God made man as a vessel. We are a vessel to contain God. Praise the Lord. You can read that in uh, verses uh, Romans 9, 21 through 24. This vessel has three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Okay? The body contacts and receives the things of the physical realm. The soul, the mental faculty, can contacts and receives the things of the psychological realm. And the human spirit, the innermost part of man, was made to contact and receive God himself. Awesome, right? Amen. Yeah, you can read that also in that verse, John 4, 24. Man was created not merely to contain God food in his mouth, in his stomach, sorry. Let me read that part again. Man was created not merely to contain food in his stomach or to contain knowledge in his mind, but to contain God in his spirit. Ephesians 5, 18. Ah, here's more pictures. I wanted to show you. Can you see? Okay. <laughs> Number three, man's fall. But before man could receive God as life into his spirit, sin entered into him. Romans 5.12 Sin deadened his spirit. Ephesians 2.1 Made him an enemy of God in his mind. Colossians 1.21 And transmuted his body into sinful flesh. Genesis 6 3 and Romans 6 12. Thus, sin damaged all three parts of man, alienating him from God. In this condition, man could not receive God. Now we get to number four, which is Christ's redemption for God's dispensing. Nevertheless, man's fall did not deter God from fulfilling his original plan. In order to accomplish his plan, God first became a man called Jesus Christ. John 1 1 and 14. Then Christ died on the cross to redeem man, Ephesians 1, 7. Praise the Lord. Thus taking away his sin, John 1, 29, and bringing him back to God, Ephesians 2, 13. Finally, in resurrection, he became the life-giving spirit, 1 Corinthians 15, 45b, so that he, would, he could dispense his unsearchably rich life into man's spirit, John 20, 22, and 3, 6. Number five, man's regeneration. Since Christ has become the life-giving spirit, man can now receive God's life into his spirit. The Bible calls this regeneration, 1 Peter 1, 3, and John 3, 3. <laughs> to receive this life, man needs to repent to God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21, and 16, 31. To be regenerated, simply come to be regenerated, simply come to the Lord with an open and honest heart and say to him, 
Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I need you. Thank you for dying for me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Cleanse me from all my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. I receive you right now as my Savior in life. Come into me. Fill me with your life. Lord Jesus, I give myself to you for your purpose. That's all you need to say. Just turn to your spirit and pray to him in your spirit. Talk to him. Number six, God's full salvation. After regeneration, I believe in needs to be baptized, Mark 16, 16. Then God begins the lifelong process of gradually spreading himself as life from the believer's spirit into his soul, Ephesians, Ephesians 3, 17. This process, called transformation, Romans 12, 2, requires human cooperation, Philippians 2, 12. The believer cooperates by allowing the Lord to spread into his soul until all his, his desires, thoughts, decisions become one with those of Christ. Finally, at Christ's return, God will fully saturate the believer's body with his life. Amen. This is called glorification, which you will see in Philippians 3.21. Thus, instead of being empty and damaged in each part, this man is filled and saturated with the life of God. I want that. Don't you? This is God's full salvation. This is God's full salvation. Okay? Such a man now expresses God, fulfilling God's plan. Amen. Ah, after receiving this life, a believer needs to attend Christian meetings in order to be nourished and supplied by the life of God that he may grow and mature in this life. In the fellowship with the other believers in the body, in the body of Christ, a believer can enjoy the riches of the presence of Christ. Amen. That was chapter one. I don't know exactly how long I was reading. Let me check the time. Oh, seven minutes. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. That took seven minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next Tuesday, I will be reading chapter two. Um, I hope you enjoyed reading with me. Um, you can also look this up on um, the website that I will be linking down below. Um, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope you enjoyed reading with me. Have a nice day. Bye.